was back in the, uh, you know, when I first started in the 80s, <laughs> you know. Not so, to put you on the spot. But. Yeah, plus I recorded on cassette back then. Really? Yeah. You started on cassette? Absolutely, yeah. So, so uh, I, can tell you, I made 500 copies, and uh, so the, the entire project cost me just uh, about roughly $150, and I drew the artwork myself. On every and, uh, single cassette. Well, it was photocopy. Oh, in the photocopy. Yeah, oh, and perfect. then I'd sell them at my concerts. And uh, I lived off that. I've sold 500 copies in a month and a half. Wow. And for like 10 bucks each. And uh, the, the profit was huge, you know. <laughs> it cost 150 bucks. I paid Malcolm, I think it was $50. And there was a bass player I brought in and paid him like 40 bucks. And the rest was all cassette. So that was my first uh, album. Have you had yeah. any, su any projects since then be that successful? <laughs> <laughs> But profit wise like, I'm not sure about that, that. <laughs> all right that was I lived off that I paid my for my groceries for like half a year all right well there you go that's actually a very good segue into my uh, next question so in terms of uh, performing you've done a lot of touring uh, throughout Canada and some Europe as well as yep. far as I understand what's the strangest gig you've ever done yeah, that one was fairly recently. I was over in Europe with Dean and, and another friend of mine, Nico uh, Boosten, who was playing drums, and we were uh, doing a 17-date tour in uh, Germany, mostly, and we were also in Switzerland. Anyways, one gig we were playing at, uh, great people, this was, uh, and, and they, they, their church is on top of a, a movie theater, and they call it a kino in German. It's, they call it a kino. And they thought it would be great that during the halftime set, Halftime of the movie because there when they when you go to theater and watch a the movie they have a break where you go oh. an intermission where you go yeah. and buy popcorn they thought it'd be cool if we could set up during the break and play in the lobby of the theater <laughs> while people were buying popcorn <laughs> and I thought I'm up for that that sounds like a cool idea but I, uh, while I was doing it it was kind of a very surreal experience and I thought these people are buying popcorn. <laughs> And it smells like popcorn, and they're <laughs> buying their drinks, and they just want to get right, back. You know, your songs have really taken a, a whole different kinds of uh, influences and styles tonight. Um, is is this something you've always kind of been interested in, all kinds of styles, or? I guess it has to do with influences, but I've always had that. Uh, I've always had a problem in trying to get down one road as a writer. Uh, and 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 when I've worked with uh, producers to record an album, Norm Strauss album, that's always been the comment. Uh, why don't you, your, your music is all over the place, we're gonna have a hard time, because the producer always wants to form the, the sound of the album in a certain right. particular direction for a niche, to, so it'll sell better. Yeah. Uh, but I have never, uh, that has always escaped me. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I guess it's just a wide variety of influences. So I love rock and roll and I love, yeah. lately I've been getting into bluegrass, and um, I don't know how that happened. I've even written some <laughs> Celtic music and um, some country music and, and some blues music, and I, I love um, it also. The, I was, we were going through the rehearsals uh, last night, and I, it really struck me the the songs are so different from one another. I mean, tonight we're going to go on a bit of a disorientating journey, uh, song style-wise. We're going to go into heavy into bluegrass, country and western, come out the other side through some rock and roll, dip into a little bit of blues, which we're going to do right now. So it might be a bit traumatic and disorientating for some of you, but hopefully you'll get touched somewhere in, the, in that. Uh, speaking of being touched, I should uh, introduce the band here. <laughs> <laughs> on my right is Mr. Michael Donnelly on electric guitar and lead vocals. <laughs> And Mr. Eric Funk on the drums behind me. And of course, Mr. Dean Clark on the bass here. Yeah. Dean, also a fantastic singer-songwriter, so if you ever get a chance to see him in concert sometime, you owe it to yourself. How's that, Dean? Did I do okay? Sorry for back breaking under the strain. Hard to want to in the heavy. Let go to your head. You 
let it go to your head now when I'm talking to your heart. You let it go to your head, baby. You let it go to your head now when you're wrong right from the start. You misconstrue my compliments. I'm baffled by the consequence. All this wasted eloquence lost in translation. The song is called How Deep Can You Feel? No, it's not. That's the wrong song. Do it in order. But it's a good question. <laughs> it's a <laughs> Thank you. Hmm. Will you dance around this town so fast that your feet don't touch the ground? Raising dust as you go spinning past Like the long way around Can you spin your wheels to pass the time If the strength don't break you down Will you trade it for some peace of mind Together. 